Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Sean McCusker. Uh, I run a company called Intelligence Software. Today I'm going to be talking about business development for recruiters. Uh, follow me on Twitter, follow me on LinkedIn, check out my blog page, intelheavensw.com forward slash blog, find out what's going on. So let's jump straight in. Recruiting is a strange game. <clears throat> You've always got this seesaw this balance between candidates on one hand, job seekers on one hand, and jobs on the other. And within most marketplaces, there's either uh, a profusion of candidates and a shortage of jobs, or a shortage of jobs and a profusion of candidates. And the recruitment industry works by exploiting this problem that employers can't find staff and staff can't find jobs or candidates can't find jobs by trying to make some money in the middle and introduce the two. And generally speaking, um, the recruitment industry does particularly well and is particularly profitable in circumstances where candidates are a scarce commodity. It doesn't do so well, or at least it doesn't isn't able to charge as much money when 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 uh, candidates are plentiful and jobs are scarce because employers tend to go directly. So uh, a lot of the focus on the webinars that I do, if you follow me, check out the blog, is all about trying to source candidates. How to, hard to find candidates, but that doesn't mean to say that there isn't a very important job to to be done with regard to finding vacancies and business development, particularly you know, if you're a, a, a company that, that wants to grow and expand, you want to find new customers, new vacancies, particularly if you get a good candidate, a candidate you know has scarce resources and you want to be able to, to find positions to place that person in. Uh, you know, you've got somebody who's valuable, you want to cash in on that as, as quickly as possible, uh, just because you have uh, if you have one person looking for a, a skill set, generally speaking, there will be other companies out there also looking for that skill set. Doesn't it make life a whole lot easier for you? Get a short list of candidates that are good, that match the bill, and then find multiple employers who are prepared to spend money with you. Most, most employers in the permanent field will only be looking for one person. Uh, if you can find other people that want the same skill set, then you can make lots more money for effectively the same amount of work. So that's why it's so important to look at this side of uh, business development. And a lot of the work that we do with regards to social recruiting and sourcing techniques can focus in on using search techniques to be able to go out and find candidates. Well, you can use the same sort of search techniques and the same sort of cleverness to find vacancies. And today, we're going to look at some of that stuff. Just going to start off with a quick overview of what I'm talking about. I'm going to start off talking about identifying employers. So these are your prospective clients that you may want to work in. Um, who hires a particular skill set? Who has vacancies you can fill? And uh, in, the, in a magical world, to be able to fill a vacancy before it even exists, to be so fast and so effective in the way that you work, then you can uh, actually understand what's going on with the marketplace and, and react to it in, in advance of it happening. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about researching the market uh, for a particular company, who works there, what's the company structure, who's just left, trying to find where the opportunities are, who to talk to, what to talk to them about, how to engage with people and do business development in a more effective way. And then finally, I'm going to make life really, really easy and I'm going to say, okay, let's take it so that we don't even have to go asking and requesting for this information or looking for it proactively. Whenever opportunities appear, how can we get the the world around us and technology to actually tell us that there's an opportunity to, 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 to take advantage of. Okay, I'm going to jump straight in and I'm going to go over to LinkedIn. Here I'm on LinkedIn and I'm going to do a really simple search. Imagine if you will that I'm a recruiter and I want to recruit an electronic engineer who has a specialism in FPGA. Field programmable gator race for anybody who's interested. And all I'm going to, this is just this, such a basic search. I do FPGA and I find 66,000 results. It's to do with silicon chips and semiconductors and it's used within uh, hardware engineering, telecoms, whatever else. Uh, say, for example, I'm in, uh, based in, in UK. I can filter by the UK and I get a, a slightly more condensed list. But I'm not interested in candidates right now. What I'm actually interested in is employers, the people that employ these skill sets. And LinkedIn, top left-hand corner, does something really interesting. It shows me 10 companies that are the main employers of this skill set. Here they are, Arm, Talley, Xilinx, all these companies. I can get a list of companies that I know employ these skills. If I go in and have a look at one of these companies, let's try um, ARM, do a company search. 
I can immediately get LinkedIn to give me um, a whole lot of information with regards to uh, the company, this ARM Semiconductors. Let's go in and have a look at this company. I can see who works there. I can see who's in my network. I can get a link to their web page. I get their <laughs> discussions. I get their updates so I can see who's who's joining the company. There's a, LinkedIn also allows you to follow companies. You can see Arm here has 10,000 followers. I follow companies. I'm not entirely convinced that there's a massive benefit in doing this. Um, LinkedIn promises you, uh, yeah, you can if you follow it, you can adjust the settings and it says it'll email you when things happen, but it doesn't seem to do that. I'm not too sure why. Uh, you can see it in your updates channel and if you go in and look at the profile, but it's not that proactive. So following a company, I'm not massively convinced how useful that is. If anybody's got any any reason to, to correct me on that, please let me know. Uh, I'd be really interested to, to understand what's going on there. Okay, now this is uh, one way of searching companies. I'm going to show you uh, searching LinkedIn. I want to show you another way of searching LinkedIn, and I've talked about this before, but I'm going to reiterate it because I've talked about it in a different way before. I'm on my webpage, intel sw.com forward slash search. Okay, and whenever you type in intel sw.com forward slash search, this isn't. Um, uh, linked to anywhere, so you're just going to have to memorize this link. Um, it brings you to this search page, and this is my custom search of LinkedIn. And what I'm going to type in is FPGA Designer London. And I do my search, and yet again, we get um, FPGA Designers uh, or FPGA Design in London. And here's a link. Oh, that's not too many. Have I typed it right? FPGA design that works a bit better. Um, so uh, what I've got here are a link, uh, a list of LinkedIn profiles. We've got quite a few of them, four thousand six hundred according to Google, um, of people that are in London. You can see there London and FPGA design. So that's useful. But there's a filter at the top here that says vacancy search, and when I click on that, I'm, I'm going to refine my list. And what I'm now getting or a list of people that have FPGA design in London, but these are people that have just changed job. I can see September 2012 to present one month. I can see uh, one month. So these people just changed job. Now, if they've just changed job and they have a skill set that's in demand, then it sort of implies the company that they left is very likely to have a requirement for their skills. So in this approach, not only can you find companies that employ this skill set, but you can also find companies that employ this skill set are likely to, to have a need for it. I'm just going to uh, diversify or go off tangent here a little because I want to show you something. If I click on uh, Franco's name here, I checked this out before, Franco is a third degree connection to me. And as you can see, LinkedIn isn't massively keen on giving me an awful lot of information about him because it's a third degree connection and, 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 and I'm logged in here. Now this is something that LinkedIn has done re very, very recently. Even if I was to click, which I did actually on his public profile, it still won't let me see what's going on. It still won't give me details about third degree connections. But I'm using Google Chrome and all I have to do to see more information is right click on his name rather than just clicking on it, open it up in an incognito window or you can just log out of LinkedIn. It does the same thing, but this stays from me having to do that. If I open up an incognito window, look at all the information I'm getting. Okay, so it's one of the new things with regards to, sorry, so I'm just trying to ring on Skype here. I'm going to knock that off. It's one of the new things on um, LinkedIn is that it uh, is trying to prevent you getting access to people that are not in your immediate network. Another good reason to build a big network, but there's just one little trick that gets you past that. Uh, Matthew here, by the way, uh, if I click on that, I am connected to him. And as you can see, if I scroll down here, he has just started working for this company. Uh, a month ago, or September 2012, this is now start of October, he left Tallies in Crawley, just south of London, and he was working in designing and debugging FPGA framework. So I've got a fair idea that Tallies is, which we know from the LinkedIn search before, is a big recruiter of FPGA designers, and here we've got an exact uh, job description, a place that is vacant within their organization. So another really, a really clever way to be able to, to spot opportunities. Now, 
One thing that, uh, this is all about LinkedIn, and I spend a lot of time talking about LinkedIn. Um, I, I, I have no particular financial or, or, or interest in LinkedIn. I just happen to spend a lot of time talking about them. But I actually develop a software system called Intelligence, which is about managing your internal information. And uh, I'm just going to use intelligence as an example here as to how you can do, use, apply the same techniques to internal information. Now, this is really, really important because internal information can be a lot better than external information in the one it's your information. It's based on people that you know and can you can talk to, and it's stuff that has been entrusted to you as, as, as a value. You can validate it and all the rest of it. And this is the candidate screen of intelligence. So it gives me all the information I need to know about a particular candidate. Now, your candidates are wonderfully useful to you because they will give you inside information about companies that you cannot get from public sources and one vitally important piece of information they will give you that nobody has not even within their own company is they tell you when they are about to leave a particular vacancy so if this candidate registers and he's about to leave uh, uh, his job then then I now know that that company is likely to employ somebody they may not even know that, but I know that. And you need to create a system within your organization that is able to manage that information and generate it in a way that that naturally develops prospecting list for you, that it naturally develops ways that you can say, okay, I have a particular skill set here, where can I place them? And you immediately know that XYZ company is about to have a vacancy within the next period of time. Now, one thing that we do with intelligence, this is really subtle, I'm just going to show it to you. Um, this isn't so much a sales pitch for intelligence. If you can't do this, if you don't use intelligence, which I know a lot of you do, but if some of you don't, then try and work out some other mechanism for doing this. Um, within intelligence, uh, just listing his employer's details, there's a small red arrow just next to intelligence software. And that tells you something critical. What we're interested in doing is trying to enable you to spot the opportunities. And what this is saying is you don't know who intelligence is, but you do know who IBM is and ABC is, because we cross-reference this person's employers with your client database. And that creates so much opportunity and synergy to talk to this person about what they do in the company, who they work with, who references, all the rest of it. So whenever I go over to intelligence, this is intelligence, and I double click on intelligence software, client doesn't exist, do you want to create this record? It creates a new blank record for intelligence, but in the bottom right-hand corner, I've got a list of names. I've got all the candidates who work there. So Troy, Maris, John, Jack, Jane. This is a way for me to be able to investigate this company, to be able to find information on it. So what information do you want to find about a company? I want to know everybody who works there. So that would be the members of staff who work there. I want to know all my candidates who work there. The people in blue, I want to know all the candidates' references that work there. If I scroll down my list, people in yellow, anybody who mentions this company name on their CV. If I open up my browser, this is a really cool add-in, I'll show you how to do this without, uh, oops, I'm not logged in. Um, uh, it shows me all the people that are on uh, uh, LinkedIn that work for this company. So I two seconds here. Talking and typing at the same time, never a good idea. Let me just uh, go back there again. So within any company, you can get a list of all the people that work there and get visibility of, of, of those all those people. The other exciting thing we can do is that you know it's it's all very well having this information to be able to access it on demand, but what about accessing it when you don't demand it? What about accessing it at a time that it that, that you want to do business development. Well, the good news is that you need you can set up on intelligence, and if you can't do it, and if you don't use intelligence, work out some other way of doing it, you can make this proactive. So you need a reporting system that automatically highlights, hold on a minute here, here is a list of all the companies that people worked for, all these people registered last month, here are the companies we don't know that they work for. There's your prospect list. You can create hot lists for this, you can you can create searches, you can re create reports for this. Work out some way within your organization that you capture this information and you're able to do it. Even if it's just putting it on a whiteboard or a piece of paper that you note all the companies that you, you, you don't deal with. Okay, let me show you another uh, way that you can do this without intelligence. Um, just go back here again to my browser. Um, say, for example, I'm on a website for, uh, there's a bank, 
in South Africa called F and B. Um, and I found there, just on any web page at all, doesn't matter, just using this as an example. If I, I have a little uh, toolbar add in on Chrome, it's called Who Works At? Who Works Dot At? You can Google it and see if you can find it. And as I click on that, it immediately tells me this is the same widget that it's a LinkedIn widget that we use in intelligence, although I use a slightly different ver variation on it. And what it does is it tells me that there's 762 employees in my LinkedIn network that work for that company. So I can be on any web page at all, click that Who Works At button, and immediately I'm getting a list of all the people that work there. So it's a really interesting way to be able to research a company and get inside track on who works there and uh, how you can network and connect through to them. It also shows me new hires, but it doesn't show me, which would be really lovely, people that have left that organization. Because one of the things that would be really, really interesting is if you want to do business with a particular company, to be able to find out automatically when people leave that organization. And I've looked at this, I've studied this problem, uh, and we've, we've spent quite a bit of time looking at it, and it's, it's really difficult. LinkedIn say that they can give this information, but it's not clear. There's no way you can say for a particular company who has left that recently. Aha! And so, <clears throat> let me introduce you to a brand new little tool that I have been working on. Um, this is now, no, this hasn't been announced anywhere. Nobody knows about this yet. Uh, and for a good reason, it doesn't quite work. <laughs> but I'll explain why. This is just a uh, this is a new project that I've been working on. T try it out. It's free. C just just use it as you want to, and give me some feedback on it. Intel-SW.com forward slash search levers. Search levers is a capital S and a capital L. Okay. And what this is is a way to be able to find out who has left a particular company. So if I type in F and B, for example, run my search, tells me that. One person uh, is now a customer service advisor, was a team leader in F&B. Click on the link, opens up his profile, or opens up LinkedIn search. There's Kyle, and lo and behold, he left F&B September, oh, uh, May 2012. Okay, so we're getting immediate information. And uh, you can also, you know, if I type in uh, BBC, let's see what we get. We get a list of people. So it's a way to be able to get uh, inside information. If you want to do business with a particular company, you can use this tool to find out who's left there. Now, a lot of the time, whenever you put in a company, uh, if there's nobody there, you you won't get results. But if you want to monitor that, now this is the bit that doesn't work, by the way. So don't expect anything dramatic. So I'm working on it. Watch this in the next few days. It will be working. Uh, what I'm hoping you'll what you'll do is you'll put in your email address and you can create an alert. So. Anytime we find somebody who updates their LinkedIn profile saying that they've left uh, intelligence software, you'll get an email alert saying these people have left intelligence software, therefore intelligence software has a vacancy you can backfill. So have a look at that, play around with it and give me some feedback on it please because we've got some work to do to, to, to develop it and do, do new things with it. Okay, what else have I got? <clears throat> Well, there's another uh, pretty cool site that I found. Um, let me see if I can find this, which is called Job Change Notifier. Now, whereas my uh, search it focuses on a particular company and saying who has left a particular company, this uh, Job Change Notifier website um, allows you to say, well, it'll monitor your LinkedIn connections and say if any of your LinkedIn connections change something uh, to do with their job title. Um, I don't know if it does very much that you can't do from LinkedIn updates itself, but it, it does send you an email every week, and I tend to read it more often than I read my LinkedIn updates, simply because it's just that bit more focused, and it just gives you a quick list of names. So I quite like it from the immediacy point of view. Um, try it out and see what happens. Job change notifier. Um, I, I don't I don't think it'll set the world on fire, but it'll it, it'll do something useful for you. Okay, <clears throat> what else have we got? Now. Um, one thing that is always quite interesting, so that is looking really at people that are that are leaving companies, but the other clear indicator obviously that a company is, is looking to hire is if they actually start advertising position. And it's really interesting to say, well, how can you be notified as soon as a company starts advertising a position? And there's a couple of ways to do it. I'm just going to give you a quick example. Um, say, for example, you have a careers page. <clears throat> Here's one I found earlier. The British Ruler Sports Federation careers page the governing body for roller sports in the UK. 
uh, and this could be any career page. This should be a customer career page, uh, a you know whatever. And I've got another little add-in up here, which is called Page Monitor. If you Google Page Monitor, you'll see the add-in. But there are lots of different websites that do page monitoring. And what page monitoring is is they'll set up alerts for you. You say I want to look at this page, and it will email you or contact you or update you anytime you see updates. And as you can see, I've got one update on my page monitor. And it is because I am monitoring the page called Business Development uh, for Recruiters, which is the webinar page I'm doing now, hence the reason it's updated. So I can go and I can view the changes, I can see what's going on. It alerts me to the fact that the changes have been made. If I go there, I can have a look at this, see what's happened. And lo and behold, it corrects my typing errors and tells me that I've changed things around and moved things around and added the embed links. So it, it highlights the areas of that page that have changed since it last monitored it. So a really, a really interesting way to be able to, to look at stuff, see what's going on, uh, get job alerts proactively. You can monitor any number of pages with these type of tools, and it works really well. What other types of pages can you monitor? You don't necessarily have to look at uh, company pages because companies also use job boards let's have a look and see what we can get from job board so now if anybody is uh, familiar with my webinars I'm sure you'll have heard me talking about x-ray search before uh, where we simply use the operator site colon and then you put in a website and here I'm looking at a website called career junction a career junction is a, a South African job board and I'm just using this simply to explore and see what the website is. Always fascinating thing. Go and explore websites, see what's going on. And whenever I do this, I notice the fact that Career Junction has lots of pages for different organizations and different companies. So if I go into one of these, let's try and find a decent one, a bigger one. I tried one yesterday. Hold on now. I don't want to get a, a recruitment agency. Uh, I had a mining one yesterday. Okay, I, I don't know who this is. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. We'll click on one of them, and as you can see, it's a list of jobs that this organization is, is posting on the job board. So I could set up a job alert for this company through the job board to see what they're posting on the job board. But I don't have to stop there. Um, job boards also group jobs. So if I go www.careerjunction, let's see what I find here. Then I can find career junction forward slash mining jobs set up a job alert on that and it'll it'll alert you to mining jobs that are being added on you can set up job alerts looking at your competitors to see what other agencies are are, are picking up you can have all this information just aggregating and feeding through to you so that you get a, a picture for as soon as a job appears that you think of interest to you you'll know about it and you'll be on the job quickly what else is there okay moving away from from this um, there's also Twitter now, uh, a lot of people are using Twitter to tweet about jobs, and that's very interesting. And when they do that, they tend to use a hashtag. And the hashtag they tend to use is hash job or hash jobs. And you can, sorry, I'm just starting up Hootsuite there. You can uh, do an x ray search uh, on Twitter. Site, so colon, uh, where have we got? Here's one. Here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, site, colon, open brackets, hash job or hash jobs, close brackets, London FPGA, and lo and behold, I'm getting lots of tweets about jobs that are FPGA jobs associated with London. So this is another way that I can do a search of Twitter and be able to find jobs. But I can automate this because I use Hootsuite as my Twitter client. I set up a couple of feeds. Here's my jobs feed. There's a live stream of jobs that are coming in. A lot of these EW jobs, I think, is a, is a electronic weekly uh, magazine, so it's tweeting about jobs. But you can set up alerts so that you can spot what's going on, and see what's going. On. You can also set up jobs there's for for companies. So hash job or hash jobs Pepsi. Let's change that. Let's change it to uh, parents. Change from Pepsi to. Coca Cola. And then I get tweets about jobs in Coca-Cola. So there's lots of interesting ways you can set up these alerts. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show was, uh, which is the, the obvious way to set up alerts, is Google Alerts. <clears throat> Anybody have done? Google Alerts are brilliant. You can set 
a, a query, a Google query, and set it up as an alert. So um, you, you can run alerts on job titles. You could use the, the hash jobs tag as well, because Google will pick up on that. You could use your uh, Twitter search. You could do searches on uh, particular websites. So I could say um, site colon uh, BBC uk for careers uh, and then have a job alert for any new posts that appear on the bbc.co.uk career site you can have daily alerts you can have weekly alerts uh, and the information it'll just be emailed you directly through google alerts so you use google to go and search the internet put your boolean searches in there using and ors the operators whatever you want to do and and google will email you alerts on those okay my time is running uh, against me. I'm just going to have a quick check on the Twitter stream. So if there are any questions or queries that are coming in, tweet them now. <laughs> okay, there's not much happening on the Twitter stream. Okay, no matter, no matter. Well, that's it for me. Uh, hopefully you found it useful. Um, Business development, there's all sorts of interesting things you can do there. Uh, lots of ways to be able to source information and find information. Check out the, uh, the those two websites, um, particularly the new one, the uh, Search Levers page. Really interested to know what you think. Uh, give me feedback on that. Hoping to get the automation side of that up and running very, very soon. Um, it's not really... it's it's. It's in very much in beta phase testing at this moment in time, so it is going to develop. It is going to look prettier over the next few weeks, um, but it's an interesting experiment to see what happens. Let me know what you think about that. Give me some feedback, um, and uh, if anybody's in South Africa, uh, keep an eye on what's going on with regard to the TrueSA.coza website. Uh, we're organizing TrueSA with Bill Borman, and that's coming up um, next month on the 6th and 8th of uh, November. Um, and we're hoping to do some more webinar stuff with Bill to, to talk about social recruiting in South Africa. That's it for me. Thanks very much for your time. I'll talk to everybody very soon. Bye-bye.